welcome to an all-star toast to the improv. Starring Billy Crystal, Richard Lewis, Martin Mull, Paul Rodriguez, and Robin Williams. And now, live from the improv in Los Angeles, your host, Robert Klein. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very kind. I'd like to thank the technical crew for the correct height estimation on the microphone. I'm totally thought Servi Valitzquez, what's his name from the, uh, Pat McCormick probably knows it, from Fantasy Island was going to be hosting, but actually, Jesus, I'm not that. Uh, welcome to the improvisation. What are we doing here tonight? We're earning a living to begin with, and Bud Friedman isn't doing badly either, the owner of this establishment. We're live. God forbid. I'm going to get so nervous about that. The improvisation, for those of you that don't know out there, is uh, an institution uh, that began uh, many, many years ago, first in Hell's Kitchen, now in Hollywood, in which so many comedians started, myself included. We're happy to pay tribute here to the improvisation, which was a home for us, and Bud Friedman, who is the uh, prior to here, who began in real estate. Uh, he was the person on the television uh, seminars, you know, you have no cash. <laughs> now, you purchase a hotel. Now, you have to leverage the hotel against the money you don't have, which you didn't have to begin with. Now, make sure you have no money. You purchase two apartment buildings with the hotel you don't own. Then you buy the city of Cleveland, which you can get in a government auction, the booklet, page 412, and you go to the penitentiary. Then you purchase your cell and you begin the business in the penitentiary when you get out. Um, Bud Friedman has been attempting to give beautiful girls the Heimlich maneuver for 15 years. Also invented a new uh, aspect of life-saving mouth to genital resuscitation, which we saw. Ooh, what is this? Is this to marry Margaret McBride here? For the first? Oh, number one! Anyway, uh, the one thing that hasn't changed in my many years at the improv is the men's room, which looks exactly, you know, very suspect. Even when they fixed everything else up, they left out. There's the kind of place you put paper on the knob when you go in, you know. <laughs> Flush with your foot like a surgeon. Everyone looks like when they're coming out, you open the door with your ass and come in. Uh, also, Louis the Chef, the temperamental Latin. Pick up, you son of a bitch, I kill you. You know one of these. Uh, get, people get very cranky at 110 Fahrenheit, and he calls the waitresses by what their order is. You know, uh, chicken salad, you pick up now, you son of a bitch. Hamburger, come here, I kick your ass. You know. All of all these waitresses, of course, are aspirant actresses. Let's get on with the proceedings here. We have a wonderful all-star cast of colleagues who it's a privilege to share the stage with. And all of the people are very, very comfortable in the fact that they'll be sitting behind their colleague when they're working. <laughs> First, 145 pounds, the University of Wichita, Richard Lewis, Richard Lewis. <laughs> From the University of Aberdeen, Wisconsin, Billy Crystal, Billy. Mr. Martin Mull. And Robin Williams. Robin. My first, our first... Did you just uh, come from shul? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, we've got to go to a club. Stay, park the BMW over there. Uh, L.A., she's my slut. Hat. You know... <laughs> Sorry, I... Our first comedian started worrying here in what? When the club started. I gotta go now? He's continued to worry. <laughs> One of the, the most it's erotic men in the too world. Fast. I can't... Richard Lewis, you take this mic. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, 
Thank you, but you know, wasn't that a little abrupt? Couldn't I just have a bypass operation before I go on? It's great to be here. I don't feel well. I'm sweating. I have chest pains, but now I'm in a good mood. Chest pains are good for me, and uh, I had a good night's sleep, and yet no rest. That's why I feel very ambivalent about being here. And I'll tell you right now, I'm excited about being here. I just, Bud Friedman, I started here, and he was, he was a great guy. He started a lot of comics. Don't we know this? And I feel for you, bud. I'm sad that uh, Sophie Tucker and King Vidor couldn't be here tonight. He was not a cheap guy. I started out there. There was, you know, not too much bread going on. He, you know, he had, he had a house ketchup, which wasn't too exciting for me. And, uh, and he a little check, $12 to going on. And, and the club, the improv check, had a, a picture of Flip Wilson on a mechanical bull waving at everybody. <laughs> And then I did about 100,000 shows at the improv, and yet I get phone calls four in the morning. I'm opening a new improv. It's in Venice it's called the Chuckle Chapel. You gotta open it up for me. But he's not like a mobster. He's like a menchy guy, nice guy. You know, the worst thing he ever did, he's threatened to break my therapist's legs. I was upset about that. And why my shrink call me? Must she call me? I'm here with my friends, my all-star friends here. And yet, she called me, my ex-shrink. I'm out of therapy now. She called me. She, apparently, she was apologetic. She made a couple of... There are you know, some kind of mistakes a couple years ago. She, she's recalling her clients from 1985. And... Although I'm not mocking her, I, but, oh, I'm not gonna go back. I always felt paranoid that was, she was trying to help me behind my back. I didn't like that, you know? And... Shrinks are the greatest, you know? I mean, look, what a gig that is. I mean, comedy is a, is a bitch, quite frankly, but to be a shrink, to be on a honeymoon, 4 a.m. in Paris, first time married, you get a call from a client. Hi, I'm sorry, doctor, I had to call you. Jeffrey's making that Caesar salad again. So that's frightening. But yeah, I'm not a wacko. I'm a comic, but I'm not a wacko. No, who's a wacko? I'll tell you right now, Michael Jackson. Uh, here it is, Michael Jackson. Not a wacko, I don't mean that in the wacko sense, but yet, he's a brilliant man, and yet, did he have to spend $100,000 for the Elephant Man bones? I'll tell you right now. Couldn't he just, like a buck and a half, stickball bat, and a collar bread? That would have been it for a buck and a half. very kind of you, but, whoa, please. Almost there, right here. Only five more dollars for the Freudian analysts. Only five more dollars we need to make. Who else, who else is crazy? Who, uh, I feel like I'm doing a... <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. I was a Freud... You know, I feel like I'm doing a talent show with a mental institution right here. It's the Christmas show, okay? You're the psycho. You have you have multi personalities. We'll do. You'll be Santa Claus. I'll be Scrooge. You know that kind of thing. But I mean, like I was, I was doing a film last year, and I was I'm watching a conjugate. That's crazy. People lying an inch away from the TV screen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's wacko. I'm, I'm neurotic. That's that's wacko to me. The whole political thing. I mean, they lied right to our faces. I mean, it was like it's like 30 years. A guy's like in the. Uh, you know, a maple syrup industry. And the guy would say, uh, did you, uh, did you ever hear the name Anchemima? I said, well, that rings a bell. I'm not quite sure right now. Then they talk to the lawyer, you know, that kind of thing. My mother calls me. Must she call me before a big gig like this? Before six in the morning? Any calls before 6 a.m. to me? I don't mean to project negativity, but to me, before 6 a.m., death in the family, death in the family. <laughs> it's unfair. Hi, Mom, how are you? Just, hi, is everything wrong? It, must she be so negative? I already saw it New Year's Eve. I spent with the family back in Jersey. We sat around midnight. The, we watched our hopes drop, you know, at midnight. <laughs> it was Christmas time, Hanukkah time, you know, and I'm not, we're, not, we're not deeply relieved. My mother, this is frightening. She has a menorah on a dimmer, which is sort of a frightening situation. <laughs> mistletoe, a mistletoe from hell. You know, you're supposed to kiss, and yet, one of my uncles died on Christmas about 30 years ago, so we had a black armband around the mistletoe there. So we had to kiss and weep, kiss and weep at the same time. And I went to her house, it was a frightening thing. She lives in a predominantly anxious section of town back in New Jersey, and my address was 283 Upshits Creek was the name of the address. Her house still is the same, sort of exposed brick and nerves to the house there. And, I go inside, the gifts from hell. I'll tell you right now, she bought me, she bought me a, a dead relative's metronome, which sort of frightened me. It was going, oh, so it was a great thing. And I got a remote control wailing wall, which is cool. I can, I can mourn and weep in any room in the house, which Phil was very important. But hey, what's the, what's the difference? As long as you have your health. As long as you have your health, you know what I mean? Oh, must I be sunny? Stay in, stay in, stay in I'll, stay, I'll stay in there. You know, 
know where to begin. Keep I with just... the guilt stuff. Keep I with know, the guilt I'll stuff. I'll keep with the guilt stuff. <laughs> where do you begin? I wish you a happy... Well, Valentine's Day is coming up now. I'll tell you right now. And tag, tag, tag team. No, no, no. No, 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 no. All right, sorry. <laughs> I got action. Oh, sit down. Sorry. What, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I, I just began. I can't. I'm not going to tag yet. It's okay. I just want to be good. I want to feel good. I want to feel good about myself. I just feel I broke up with this woman. I, I wish you well. All I know is she was an actress from hell. She, look, I'm not, a, I'm, she, I'm not a positive guy. She had lithium, which is a, a major drug. And yet, before lithium was like, I want to go to a carnival. No, what? Nick Van Bergen Festival. It was like a, kind, of a, kind of a thing. You know, she was into a Baba. Hey, I wish Baba as well. You know that. But uh, I'm into therapy. And when I'm crying, she goes, we can't cry now because you're the wheat. You're the whole wheat raisin bread. I, you know, it was a frightening situation. And or, you know, I'll tell you right now, sex went into the toilet. I feel that sex should be a key to a relationship. Don't you, I know you feel that. I know you both feel that. But we were headed. Yes. 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 Am I right or am I wrong? Huh? That looks like, yeah, but we... we big, big, big sex. Yes. Yes. Big time, Tommy yes. Civil letter guard, big time. Yes, yes, but we were headed to an orgasm. Yes, you can applaud that, it's a great ad lib. It was a great ad lib, but the... Keep I was with the guilt thing, keep with the guilt thing, it's okay. I'll go with that right now. But I was headed to an orgasm custody battle, I'll tell you right now, and uh, I mean, we made love, you know, and she put an armrest in the middle of the bed, I wasn't frightened about, oh, just, uh, you know, she said intercourse is one of her pet peeves, I wasn't thrilled about that, you know. While we're making love, she did a breast examination. I feel that was not good, you know? And birth control, hey, I'm sorry. I know it's not fair for women to use all those things, but all these contraptions from France, La Ketch's Mitt, those kind of things, you know? But what do you, I'm paranoid, what do you use? And she threw salt over her shoulders. I wasn't thrilled about that, you know? I said, well, she says, I know my ebb and flow, ebb and flow. Weren't they on Sullivan in 65, the ebb and flow? I had, you know, in 1968, I, I had my, my period in 68, and yet the Aurora Borealis is over here, and you have to wear the wizard's hat on Thursday. You know that, and I know that. It's frightening. You want to feel good about yourself, and I tell you right now, sexually, I feel sex is a key. I feel that, Rob. I'm not pointing at you. It's a key. It's a key, and yet I just feel it, I, I, it wasn't, wasn't good. It wasn't good. She was bad-mouthing me when we broke up. She said she had to fake foreplay. I wasn't thrilled about that, you know? And then I gave her an anti-climax. I wasn't happy about that, you know? Then I had to go to a penis awareness clinic, which was sort of a frightening... And how do you go out? How do you date? It's frightening. I don't know what to do. I just don't... You know, I'm just... I'm a hypochondriac, and I just... I don't know what to do. Even masturbation, I say to myself, can I just be friends with myself, you know? And I'm afraid I might give myself something. It's sort of a frightening thing, and... Uh, but yeah, hey, aren't I gonna tag you now? Don't I just wanna sort of share the show now? Uh, it's great to be here. I'm gonna come back soon. I gotta just have some shot therapy out there and I'll be back and, but congratulations. And yet I'm doing a Will Rogers on acid impression here for no reason, but uh, it's a thrill to be here. It's a thrill to be with you guys. And uh, I think I have the tag now. How do you end? How do you end with these people here? You go to the host. I, oh, to the host. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure it's to be here. Host. Thank you very much. So young and so handsome. Give me some water. That's some Saint Joe. Here you go, Mr. Clown. There's water for everybody. How about some Saint Joseph Valium for children? And some coffee for a little speedy man. Look, a Betty Ford speedball. Luckily, it has no effect. Anyway, I'd like to tell you. I'm going. Yeah. It's too handsome to have that kind of comp. When I think of the don't improv, judge me, Robert. Please. Can I? Oh, bitch, on. just tell them who you are. Get out, get out. Tell <laughs> I'm sorry, we're men with men. We're male lesbians. Talk about it. It's the Donahue Show. Who's next? You are. Me. Huh? Are you are, Billy? <laughs> this is one... I just want to talk about one memory of the improv. There are so many times. My social life uh, from the improv, so many waitresses and wonderful times... There was the beautiful ventriloquist who moved her tits. <laughs> who, during orgasm, would say, I want your baby, I want your baby. And 
then would begin to talk about Iraq. Do you think I should change the puppet? Do you think I should? People were very into their work. Our next, our next performer uh, is someone who I, I'd like to introduce you to something, uh, would it make you proud? Because he's an old New York sports fan. By imitating Bob Shepard, the announcer at Yankee Stadium. Right? Right. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Yankee Stadium. Number seven, seven, seven. Billy, Billy, Crystal, Crystal, number seven. seven. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You were great, and yet I'm frightened that we're all going to go home talking like that. <laughs> Because it's infectious. You find that you want to say, I was at the valet park and it's Martin Borman. I recognize the dental charts and we're doing, we're doing a dosi do We're do si do And my relatives are in the trunk and they, oh, okay. We had the same relatives though. We did. No, my grandparents. Very unlikely, I'm sure. No, we had, they, they, there's only one pair and they just send them to different houses. <laughs> and I would, in my, my room, my great grandparents would be making love. It was my, it was great that they're doing it. It's, I'm thrilled at 70 that I'll be able to even think about it. But in the next room, I could hear them. The small talk was the greatest. Hey, 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 Is there any greatness? I'm so goddamn hungry now. Was I a czar? Tell me I was a czar. Why am I playing the floor? There's people here. I'm so glad these stools, I feel like a fucking dog act here on... Hey! Jump through the hoop. The saddest thing in the world is a dog act on the Ed Sullivan Show. I don't know how many of you, I don't know. I've had dogs. Not one of them likes to be in a suit with sunglasses and shoes and go out on a date and walk on the two... F it's the, 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 the walk of a dog is the saddest thing because they're walking to usually satin doll. And... <laughs> It's a dog on a date. Come on, Sparky, look at Sparky. Come on, go get your date. It's a paint expression. <laughs> you know that look? But this Reagan's getting me nuts. Segway. <laughs> ah, no, nice segway. Well, no segway. Well, don't. Don't don't Come on, you, you have to. And you never oh, I feel noticed. like a white minstrel show. Keep oh. on, Mr. Dunny, keep on. Well, you got those nice shoes there. Yes, tap dancing shoes for white people. Look at this. <laughs> I've got no rhythm, can't you tell? <laughs> I'm a rapper, I'm a rapper. Oh, yes, I am. Jewish cheerleaders. Oh, give me an A. A. Give me an A. A. Give me an A. A. What's that spell? A. Let's hit it. Jewish mime. Oi, is this a small room? <laughs> e, e. I'll walk against the wind. What am I not? So walk with the wind. I'll get there fast. <laughs> what? Well, but this rank is, no, you gotta be 60 to do sort of like a roast. You gotta be one of those guys. I'll tell you, it's nuts. <laughs> they sell these video cassettes every place. My wife comes home from the gynecology. She said, buddy, I got cystitis and amadeus. I said, is it serious? She said, parts of it, but the music is beautiful. I tell you, you gotta be that guy. <laughs> I'll be that guy. I've written a lot of good things at the improv. It's a place to be, it's a gymnasium. You can work out here. It's good, I've written a lot of things here. I, I wrote a thing about Yul Brynner doing the Babe Ruth story. I thought it would be interesting. <laughs> the late, he would have been a great Babe Ruth. Say, Babe, can you hit a homer today? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to stand at home plate and point out there. <laughs> These Chicago clubs have got me nuts. There's a sick kid in Brooklyn. I'm going to do the single, double, triple, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> that would be good. That's where I found Fernando. When I started doing the Fernando character, it was because he was on my cable station. I have a terribly cheap cable station. It's called Bob's Cable. And it was Fernando Lamas in Death of a Salesman. I thought this was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. He came in. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Lindon, are the boys home? 
Biff, you are a moody man, but you, you look marvelous, but look at you, darling, the woods are burning. And I thought this, you had to do something about this guy. But this Reagan is getting me nuts. You thought I forgot? No, I can't wait. I'm just tired of hearing about the colon. I'm sorry. They're selling maps for the colon on Sunset Boulevard now. They send cameras up the ass, the same ones they used to explore the Titanic. It's like, you know, the two 75-year-old wrecks we're looking at. And what's up there? Geraldo Rivera. I don't know what's in here. We have no idea what's in here. Now, if Gary Hart wins, is that McDonough Rice, the first chick? I would love Cuomo to win. I would love Cuomo to come out. I really would. We need a tough... No, we need a guy who sounds like Joe Carcioni. I think that would be a great for Oh, this Persian Gulf this time of year, you know, it gets all hot and stuff, and when you gotta go up to these guys with the towels on their heads and just go, bomb, right there, right? <laughs> well, I'm thrilled to be here, bud. I've worked very hard in this club, and it's really paid off. Thanks for giving me all the time. And now I'm gonna turn it over to back to Robert. Thank you for having me. Third round. Don't be afraid, you could wear. Don't be afraid. Billy Crystal. Thank you. Cheer. Don't be afraid. He didn't mean to hit you in the head. He what round is it? It's round. Well, fuck it. You're still here. What round is it? Don't be afraid. What round is it? Look out. They're still. He's waiting for you out there. I'm sorry. He punched you in the nipples. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> Why are they wearing rubber See? gloves? What are they afraid of? Don't be afraid. You're pretty. They never know what round it's in. They put a beautiful girl with net stockings on in Vegas, and you just eight like this, you know, instead of putting you the number on her ass where everyone's looking, they have to... You know what else? Michael Tyson, who has a series on HBO, a comedy series called His Fights, this is the strongest man. The neck starts up here. He beats people senseless, and then I say, How was the fight for? And he goes, Well, that was a very good fight. <laughs> You know, he, I, I threw some important punches. I started to throw some of them. And, you know, he, he didn't really want to fight. So, uh, you know, what, what, what am I supposed to do? It was a really good fight. I'm in deep shit now. No. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. There was, oh, now, there was an excellent juxtaposition there. The man is a tremendous brute and yet has a high voice. Did you get now, it? Now, what? You got it. I got it immediately. I thought it was excellent. Don't be saying nothing bad. Don't say anything bad. No, I won't. The man is big. No, he won't. I have an ad lib in 28 seconds. Okay, I hope you still around here when I open. No, what it bothers me is that line of the corner. This kid that's a maintenance man at the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City. His friends came up from Atlantic City. Papolo Manolo, you know, from Philadelphia. And four minutes later, he's in a coma with three neurologists smacking him around. They say, you're ahead, Manolo. You understand me? You're ahead. I feel like jumping in. Manolo, you're by no manner of means ahead. You're about to be punched into a nectarine, Manolo. Throw the tolo in Manolo. Sorry. I don't feel that boxing has affected me. And boxing... Thank you very much. I feel better about myself now. Our next performer. Sorry. Our ne sorry. Our ne sorry. Our next performer, but seriously speaking, actually worked in the kitchen here under Louis the chef. Um, learned to say, Big up! Um, out you wrote you wrote you wrote out you wrote you wrote you wrote hey. Paul Rodriguez hey. Paul. thank you hey Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Richard Lewis. My impression. No sé, estaba yo aquí pensando cuando mi mamá me llamó. Estaba viendo que guilt from other homes. No sentía. Tenía un satellite dish in my pants. <laughs> you ain't got no problems, man. All you need is a quaalude and a hooker, and you're set, man. That's good. <laughs> You know, a quailute and a hooker and all your problems will go away. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the first Gentile of the night, as you can see. I'm... 
Welcome. I'm sitting over there in the Gentile corner next to... For those of you playing the home game, Gentiles are people who eat mayonnaise for no reason. Thank you. That's right. Use the word simply. Also try the word Mishugana later. Thank you. Two Gentile businessmen on the street. Hey, how's business? Great. Thanks. We could just have some more uh, obscure Jewish references. I think I'll get off. Paul, oh, he's oh, not uh, Jewish. No, that's no, I know. No, I was no. just gonna comment that you are you are beyond white. You are, you are seriously. I swear to God, he looks like Hitler's wet dream. This is, this is what Hitler had in mind. Oh yeah. Oh, I want them all to look like him. Oh, young Kurt Valheim. Where's how fast his hand was moving? Hey. My God, it was like the speed of life. Yes, it was. Right? I didn't have an orgasm in another dimension. That was. <laughs> I swear to God, you and Vanna White should have kids of Pillsbury Doughboys or something. But hey, I don't know why I'm insulting him. He's actually a good guy. But hey, this is what we're afraid. We should insult him. You, you rich bastard. <laughs> no, I, I kid. But there's a thin line between comedy and working again. I know. <laughs> You can roast but until you tell the truth, and it's back to the kitchen, Paul. I, I'll be there in the kitchen with the rest of the illegals you are working. You, you haven't asked none of them if they got citizenship. I'm sure they're all from Arizona, yeah. And they're going, ah, oh, si, sí, cuando, señor boot. Oh, nice guy, yeah. Actually, I do have a real story, but what, three years ago, you booked me in Fresno. Hey, that segue's better than, but that, that Reagan drives me nuts. That, come on, it was, it was some kind of segue, right? Real story. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, your car's And I was mountain. worried about saying penis. I'm sorry. It's really a... Some people worry about their penis. <laughs> I think Reagan's got me nuts. He's got me nuts. Reagan, hey. Fresno, okay, fuck Fresno. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Reagan does have me nuts. 88's gonna be a good year. He can't run again, son of a bitch. He's got more lives than a cat. And I, I think Gorbachev didn't make him look bad because I don't trust this commie bastard, right? The press went crazy over Gorbachev. I think he looks like Ed Asner, right? <laughs> Gorba Gorbachev looks, looks like, uh, he's, I don't trust this commie bastard because you can tell what's on his mind. He's got like a map of South Vietnam on his head, if you notice. <laughs> he's got freckles that look like Afghanistan. Nicaragua was in his pants, I'm sure there's some. <laughs> And all these people running for office, uh, Dukakis, he's never gonna win with a name like that because Kakas is Kakas in any language. It, <laughs> imagine if he gets into office, hi, I'm President Dukakis, my wife, diarrhea. <laughs> Young son, constipation. But Fresno, you know, he had Fresno. <laughs> Fresno Boy, drives me nuts. <laughs> this Fresno drives me wacky. <laughs> Thanks. Three years ago, Bud Friedman says, Paul, I'm starting this mariachi band. <laughs> and a dream comes through. It came through. He says, uh, we're gonna work in Fresno. It's gonna be a great show. We're there, we went over there. Uh, these are your people, he tells me. Uh, yeah, I don't know where the hell they were from. They weren't my people. And, um, and we drove over there. I thought we were gonna fly, but says, it'll be a fun drive. <laughs> There's no planes to Fresno, Paul. Uh, we'll have a good time. On the way back, we stop at my Uncle Mario's house. I introduced Bud to my Uncle Mario. I said, uh, Uncle Mario, this is Bud Friedman. Bud, this is my Uncle Mario. My uncle goes, uh, Friedman, Friedman. You're a Jew! <laughs> Bud says, yeah, so you're a taco folder. Paul, in the car, let's go. Right? <laughs> Where are we going? Uh, you're exaggerating Am I just exagger a little bit. Just That's what little. comedy is, Bud, is an exaggeration, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> Tell him, I say, what do you want? Man. Do you want the goddamn truth then? Okay, I'll say it like it really Go happened. Go back, Yop. Go ahead, give thanks. it to him. Guys, thanks. You, you fall in whenever you feel you can ruin what act I have. <laughs> you drop in, you know. Uh, you know there's an uh, abundance of Hispanic comedians. Uh, but, uh, God knows there's a lot of us. But, uh, shit, look at me. Do I look like a lottery winner or what? <laughs> That's, that's God's way of paying us back, okay? We're not good at business, but we win the goddamn lottery. <laughs> you know? it's a, I think Caucasians aren't even buying tickets anymore. They send the maid, Consuelo. Here, Consuelo, you go to the 7 Eleven. Go ahead, Consuelo, buy some tickets, I mean, you may win. Shit. 
This last guy won $25 million. They interviewed him on TV. His name is Olvera. Mr. Olvera, what are you going to do with the money? He goes, well, first I think I'll go to Magic Mountain. <laughs> it's kind of like a dream come true, Colossus. I'm going to go to, thank you. I'm going to go to Kmart. Buy some jumper fables. I was looking, look at this set. Tell me the truth. Does this look like the gay love connection? Look at this set. Look at this. This is what happens when a decorator has a small budget and no imagination, isn't it? Oh, ooh, is he here? Right now, there's, he said, uh, he's going, making into your house going, that's it, these curtains are out of your fucking They're house. <laughs> that's it. I'm putting up shit you'll never recognize. I'm leaving some Peter Allen records all over the place. There you go. Just a few things for you, Mr. Wonderful. But Reagan drives me nuts. Come on, he drives me nuts. Tell the Fresno story. The Fresno, I did, but you know, but Bud goes, let's mention Mark Lanau, because this is the improvisation with with Mark Lanau, it's like, it's like pressed with fluoride. No, he has above title Pardon? billing. He has above title billing now. It's Bud Friedman, Mark Lano. Oh, well, you know, some say tomato, some say tomato. <laughs> you say that in Spanish, then we're even, okay? Somewhere oh, here, quit giving me Soros. You're giving me Soros. I don't need it. Come on, I thought we were mishpuche. <laughs> oh! jokes about Jewish people because I stupid I want a career but hey I'm kind of pissed off because my, my sister is, is dating an Iranian like there's a shortage of Mexicans in Los Angeles she she is she's dating a guy named Ahmed Ahmed and is it me or these the hairiest people God ever invented Iranians got hair in places monkeys don't I swear you know, this summer at the beach, you go see them in, at Venice. It's like they wear the smallest underwear, big, thick, it's like Brillo fat in there. The hair go right through the nylons. You look at them, it looks like cactus fruit. And I told her, I said, look, I'm not prejudiced. You're my sister. I want you to be happy. If you love this man, well, shit, fine. You love this man, but think of the future. One day you're going to have kids, you know, have Mexican, have Iranian. They're, they're going to grow up to own and vandalize their own gas station. I said, you know, should think about the truth. But <laughs> thanks, Bud. Thanks for uh, thanks for working here, uh, allowing me to work here at the Improv. The Improv is a great place to get laid to. Can we just say that? It, <laughs> seriously, any disease you want, it's waiting for you out there. Hi, I saw your act. I've never had one of your kind. <laughs> nowadays, let's face it. Well, it used to be fun. Nowadays, death is, is sex is uh, lethal. I, I, I don't touch myself either. I mean, Stop laying it I, on me. Fine. <laughs> I'm a big fan, but I just, I have enough problems, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought we were all friends, thanks, thanks a lot, wow. No, that, that was affectionate, that was affectionate. Shit, I hate to say you that was affectionate, it really was. Oh, give me my knife. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> oh, you'll be Jewish again, damn God damn it. Well, folks, I lost control 30 minutes ago, but it's been fun, thank you. Greatest diet plan ever. <laughs> 250,000 strong every day and grow. Steal a meal, steal a meal. How much did you lose? I've lost 700 pounds and I don't even know who they are. <laughs> you take your meats, you move them over. You take your carrots, you move them over. Take your vegetables, your bread, you move them over the other side of the wallet. Then you eat the wallet at the end of the day. And your protein, you just forage for. Ooh. Well, oh, what 
got an image. Anyway. That <laughs> Reagan. That Reagan. He's got me nuts. <laughs> That yeah. Reagan living in Fresno drives me completely nuts with my shrink. Anyway. <laughs> the next player tonight. Nine, 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 nine. And I could do I should do Phil Rizzuto then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy cow, you Huckleberry. <laughs> Phil Rizzuto for the money store. That's it. <laughs> I do a few off offbeat ones. I always played it safe. I do Isaac Newton. <laughs> Who can check, you know? And I first invented the calculus, you know. There's always some idiots not like him at all, you know. <laughs> I do Elena Verdugo, Marvin Kapp, offbeat people. <laughs> Moving along, I, I, meanwhile, everyone's making fun of the set. It's very beautiful. And I could see the negotiations already with Bud trying to schnur it from the production company, you know. <laughs> Because before they had a Woolworth brick wall back here that, you know, the Christmas, it's made of plastic. <laughs> Our next... Oh, yeah, I liked it, brother. You, yeah. <laughs> you're there, you're Let there. Let la vision. You are God. Pronto llegare, tu me cantarás. We're with you. Anyway. So. Our next performer, a dear friend of all of us, actually just here because he likes smoke-filled rooms. Martin Mull, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Please sit down. Thank you. You know, before we go any further, I wonder if we could all just take a moment here. Listen. It's where your March of Diamonds money goes, ladies and gentlemen. Bless his heart. I wonder if we could all take a moment and think about how important this evening really is. Lance could see Suzanne silhouetted in the window above. Her diaphanous negligee straining against her swelling breasts. Her tongue darting about her waiting lips like a flickering candle. Don't stop now! Dark and wet as the night itself. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we are gathered here to pay tribute to a fully licensed restaurant. But for countless tourists, theatrical agents, and children of the night, it is more than just a place to eat. It is more than just a building to get drunk in. For it is here on this very stage that many a confused and struggling young person wandering aimlessly down the sidewalk of life has stepped right into show business. This mother stage, suffering the suckling babes of comedy unto her bosom. Amen. Yes, they all stood here mm -hmm. and they all sucked. But they learned, and they grew to greatness. Right here is where Robin Williams tirelessly and deftly molded his otherwise debilitating social disorders into a seven-figure paycheck. Robin. Here, on this very stage. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Indeed. <laughs> Here is where Paul Rodriguez discovered the mother load of material to be found in ridiculing one's own people. <laughs> making him the envy of every non-Latin performer in America. <laughs> uh, 
Lord knows I'd love to tell some jokes like, you know, how does a Mexican know when he's hungry, his ass stops burning, things like that. I can't. I can't do it. That's your turf, and I wouldn't step on it. His name is Martin Mull. He lives maybe in Malibu. You can find it. Thank you again, Robin. And right here is where Billy Crystal first realized that he and Sammy Davis shared more than height and a common religion. <laughs> and right here is where he began the work of healing the wounds of ethnic diversity in this country with just a smile and a manager. Billy, bless you. Thank you, Martin. Marty, and may I say thanks because you're giving me nachis and I want to say for you to say hi to the other boys from Brazil when you see them my pleasure Bill thank you and right here is where Richard Lewis perfected his Tony Danza meets Marion Lorne kind of delivery pretty damn unique and he also and also hear that he found out that there were dozens of people across America that could identify with him. <laughs> and here's where Robert Klein rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed that spontaneity that would carry him to the Merv Griffin show, the silver screen, and ultimately to cable. Good work, Bob. No, it's the least I can do. You want me to get some water or something, man? It's okay, baby, I'll take it out slow. Hey, bad white man, bad. I don't blame you, Robin. I blame the one that gave you the shot. Thank you, Martin. Okay, at least it keeps you on your feet. It's better than that terrible thing we saw backstage. I don't know, never. I, must I, remember, confess, I missed I... you. I missed you. Thank you for calling, though. I've missed you. Okay. Thanks. It was an evening. Who knew? It was fun. I guess the Great Dane remembers. I guess the living. <laughs> and that living room's a little more butch now that we did what we did, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Robin had the idea for the steer horns to hold up the uh, the curtains there. I thought that was kind of nice. Dad, want to keep reading? I will. Actually, I must confess that I personally have never performed here, or at any comedy club for that matter. It's, uh, as a firm believer in capitalism and the minimum wage, um, my professional hands were kind of tied, bud. Sorry. I'm not suggesting that the performers at the improv go unpaid. Au contraire. In fact, on some occasions, those checks uh, can reach double digits, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, there are those who ask for no payment, those who use the improv as a kind of a testing ground for new material, sort of a comedy escrow for that Hope For Tonight Show shot, right? So where does the money go? Now, Bud Friedman is a man who has always strongly felt that being able to loosen up our neckties and smile at our troubles is worth at least a 650 cover and a two drink minimum. Let's say, for instance, that over a pleasant holiday weekend, perhaps a thousand people might come through that front door to relax and have a chuckle or two. We're talking 6,500 bucks right there. Not to mention the three or 4,000 more from the bozos who take the two drink minimum as a dare. Call it five grand a night, low end. Now, it seems obvious that given the neighborhood, rent here could not be $150,000 a month. Yet, according to Mr. Friedman, it's a break-even business. How can this be? Well, very easily, I'm afraid. First of all, let's talk about the rising costs of competent interior decorating. All of you, settle back in your comfortable chair for a moment and look around you. Perhaps you can appreciate that this kind of luxury, it doesn't come without a pretty price tag as well. Just save it for later, he still has that rash. Now let's talk about the waiter persons here. They can't be expected to survive on the 10% of their tips that Mr. Friedman allows them to keep. They have to be paid a salary, and from the looks of their clothes, it's a damned handsome one. 
Add that to the cost of a reliable sound system, uh, state-of-the-art backstage facilities, and it's easy to see how paying the performers here, the going rate for human life as we know it, could spell disaster. Now, there is, of course, a part of me that feels very sad indeed that I am not an improv alumnus, that I never had the fun of standing up here for over an hour asking hayseeds where they're from. <laughs> There's an unspeakable loneliness that I feel when I overhear other comics of my generation sharing memories of a, of a waitress that had blown them both. Um, and of course, the emptiness of never having stood on the sidewalk at midnight counting the house with a man they called Bud. But alas, I work for money. Perhaps someday enough will be enough, it's hard to say. I have a figure in mind, of course, and uh, if and when I reach it, who knows? Uh, maybe then I can work for free drinks and bus fare. Maybe then I can finally say a resounding yes to all those pinko bleeding hearts that badger me on a daily basis to perform at their little friggin' fundraisers. <laughs> if that day comes, then I shall begin right here, learning the art of performing for chump money on the beloved stage of the improv and, and feeling the warm, gently guiding hand of Bud Friedman so close behind me. A crazy dream? Perhaps so. But it's a dream that I retain in a very special part of my body. So, bud, all I can say is keep up the good work and long live the improv. And for you folks watching at home, let me just add that if you've never spent an evening at the improv, you won't know what you're missing. But if you do, you'll know why everyone says that Bud Friedman is to comedy what a stewardess is to the women's movement. God bless you. Thank you. You know, Martin, before you made those comments, I don't think you realize that Bud is a Korean War hero, which is true. Oh, my goodness. Took some shrapnel and pork chop hill. Couldn't we won us. that one, didn't we, Bob? We did. No, we didn't. It was a tie. But look, it wasn't his fault. He opened up a comedy club in Pyongyang originally. I got a North Korean that juggled bullets with his teeth. Couldn't tell his mother he was at Pork Chop Hill because she didn't eat pork chops. Let me relate to you, make you nervous. Leave him alone. <laughs> Just leave him alone. I'm laughing. Why are you... I'm la I appreciated it. We used to work in the subway before we went to the Emirates. Amazing Grace. Give me a dollar or I'll embarrass the shit out of you. You know that. <laughs> Our uh, final performer is a shy man and... <laughs> has a very strong affinity for Jonathan Winters, whose work he continues in Jonathan's semi-retirement. <laughs> Robin Williams. Thank you. Thank you for what you've said. To have the courage to say that and wear those glasses. Thank you. Hola, es el aguango. Receiving the Lester Maddox Achievement Award this year, Martin Mull, for his work in achieving racial integrity. But first, a few words from Jimmy the Greek. You know, people look at Jimmy the Greek and say, my God, how can he say those damn things? You give Gandhi five cocktails, he'll come up with the same shit, okay? <laughs> Even Gandhi would be in a bar going, they're fast, what can I say? <laughs> God damn it, I fast and they're bigger than I am. I, if I could be Bubba, I would. <laughs> God damn it, I'll tell you. I love this, thank you for wearing this Russian sailor hat, thank you. <laughs> Look at this thing, it looks like, oh, hold on here, takes it off, she's going, no. <laughs> I just want to meet a woman for something special. <laughs> I bring fins. I am not afraid of sex. I thank you for wearing this. It's wonderful. Look at this sweater. Look at this. Obviously, someone took some masculine and said, I'll knit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. Thank you for wearing this. Some man went blind saying, fuck it. Just get it out of the shop. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
The sweat, the sacred sweat, the sacred. I'm, yes, I'm dyslexic. I'm not afraid to say it. I was a kid at Halloween going, hi, trick or trout. Oh, look around. People are getting afraid. They're going, oh, man, man, he's coming towards my table. Oh, how you doing? My God, I didn't, I thought you were still in Congress. My God. You have that look like you're going to go, uh, any time, Mr. North, did you realize we had, did you realize we had your balls in a sling? At any time, Mr. North. And there was old Ali, Ali up there looking kind of like, you know, he's looking right at him. They go, uh, pardon me, Senator, may I have a moment before I respond to the question? No. <laughs> Mr. McFarland, would you like to answer the question? <laughs> I don't even know where I am. Well, well, that Reagan, I tell you, that Reagan. Why didn't they ask Oliver North? He's up on the stand. All you had to ask him was, where are the strawberries? The strawberries. I never know about the strawberries. <laughs> now, the men didn't like me. I didn't like the men. I want more height from you. It's past the holidays. More height. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. Yes. Yes. Somewhere there's an animal going, oh, fuck it, take it, go. <laughs> You know, I told her, I told you that I found these things on the freeway. I sold them together. <laughs> you know, there are those little possums out there running around. Pepperidge Farms putting them in a doughy crust. <laughs> Look around. How are you doing there? Look at you in a tuxedo and a cowboy. You just must have a big old thing. You have a big truck outside that says, I break for insight. <laughs> Look, you're the type of man who could step in his own shit and go, it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Lord have mercy. There's love here in Hollywood tonight. That's why I come here to the improv, because I don't have an act. <laughs> to me, that means something, improv. That means jerk off a lot of people at once. <laughs> why, because I'm sorry I don't have an act. I could, I, I did at one time, and, but now, no. I, why do you look at me like we did something? <laughs> you look at me like, I'm sorry, I didn't know anything. <laughs> but keep wearing this, it looks like graph paper. <laughs> I don't know. I, this is nice on a night when they keep you all fully lit and you all have this look like... <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna talk to me. <laughs> I don't know. I like coming here because for me it's fabulous, you know. Tomorrow is the Super Bowl. I want to see large men hurting each other. Yes. <laughs> I want to see... Maybe they should have some fashion consultant before the Super Bowl going... This time, when they go into the bowl, I want every time someone is tackled, some clothing comes off. <laughs> so by the end, everyone's in a huddle going, check it out. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, the huddle's like a lazy Susan. All right, all right. I'm sorry, I offended you. Obviously, you're a football fan going, don't ever do that again. Don't make fun of large men. I'm sorry. Now the gospel according to Bubba. Yeah, though they do have big thighs, they shall run. And others shall block, for they have no necks. And God did look down and he said, who shall own the team? And he said, let there be whites. For thine is the end zone and the dance for no reason. Thank you. <laughs> what are you drinking here, son? What did you buy the little woman tonight? Oops, sorry, I pissed all over you. <laughs> Feels like a bad resident. Hello, I'm your waiter, Andre. <laughs> That's all the waiters in Hollywood are going, listen, I'm an actor. Fuck it, I don't know why I'm serving you chicken. <laughs> Champagne, Moye Chandon. God, I remember this. Drink a few bottles of this, wake up nude in the hood of my car. <laughs> That was fun. Those were the old days, remember, bud? When there'd be 15 guys in the men's room in that one stall going, how you doing, like to go? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes. It was like Barman Bailey Circus in Columbia. Hey, nice show, nice show, nice show. <laughs> and that cocaine was so good, too. <laughs> you think this was caught with anything? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Memories. Yes, but those are past us now. I remember when I came here, I feel like we should be reminiscing. I remember there was Bud Friedman sitting by the door before this used to be a leather bar. I came down here from San Francisco. I remember I walked in. I, I used to play in clubs in San Francisco, like in Berkeley, where most of the people were in wheelchairs, they couldn't laugh. You just heard, ee. <laughs> If they really liked you, they'd pop a wheelie like, ee. <laughs> Enjoyed your comedy. But sometimes I'd, well, I'd work at a place. There's another place in San Francisco called the Intersection Coffee House where they'd have comedy after lesbian poetry. I know you shouldn't say lesbian. 
I'm sorry, I won't say lesbian. Women in comfortable shoes. Okay. Sorry. A large woman named Betty's gonna... I'd like to talk to you now. But I said I came down here because I thought, Samuels and Cohen, they're going to L.A. Yes, I feel like that. Let's go to L.A. That's where it is. And I land on Hollywood Boulevard and it's oh, junkies and pimps and whores. Oh, my. Yes. It's like Dorothy on acid. This is what it's about. And there's Bud, like the Wizard of Oz, going, Don't look behind that curtain. Don't come into this club now. Ah. And for a brief moment, can I use the word Mitzi? Is that okay? We have to use it. She's up there, man. She's up there, man. There's like an unspoken thing. Explain it. Explain. I'll explain it, brother. I'll tell him. It's like up there on Sunset Boulevard. There's another place. A different place, far away from here. It's another place. I'll say the word, it's okay, bud. You made a lot tonight, it's okay. <laughs> Call the comedy store and sometimes people cross over and then they can never go back. <laughs> I just wanna say, maybe one day you and Mitzi will sit down in a room like Reagan and Gorbachev but without the funny stuff on the head. And there'll be peace. And one day there'll be just one club called the Comovation. That'll be it. <laughs> where everyone will gather down and will eat locks for no reason. And you'll have her hair and she'll have your hair. That'll be it. Don't you I see? I've gone too far. You've gone too far, Robin. Yes, bud! It can happen in our lifetime. No. Why do you have to open up every place she is? She's scared. Oh, there's money for everybody, can't you see? Right now, I feel like Gandhi in a delicatessen going, who had the fish? <laughs> but that's my dream. Call me fucking crazy. <laughs> Call me fucking wild. Look at these people up here. All of us working. Look at this man in a bow tie. That's a bowler tie, isn't it? That's for people who are actually brain dead to go. That's just all. Just put it on like that. <laughs> That's where it is. But I gotta go. I gotta go back up to San Francisco. There it is. It's amazing up there. You see people dressed like a cowboy and you're going, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know Paul talked about it. Paul's over here. Robert's here. Paul talked briefly about that. But hey, sex is a little scary unless you're gonna live like with... Maybe if you're really afraid, you're gonna have to buy one of those rubber dolls and go, hi, Mom, this is Michelin. <laughs> but about I love you. I gotta... They're, they're pulling me off, but It's the end of my time. We're live. Robin Williams. Thank you very much. Peace on our lifetime. Turn the beat together, people. Hold on, Raymond.